Now, we will take a very simple example to find out how we can calculate the yield percentage. Say for example, some unprocessed raw material has been procured from the market which is the APQ and let that be of x grams. Now, after it has undergone all the process and it has been served on the platter of the guest, let it be of y grams. Now, we calculate from here the loss in weight due to processing which is APQ minus EPQ that is the concept of trim x minus y. Now, when we are calculating the percentage, it is the EPQ by APQ into 100 that is whatever we have served ultimately on the platter of the guest divided by whatever we originally received multiplied by 100 that gives the yield percentage. If we want to find out the trim percentage, we calculate that by dividing the trim by the APQ and multiplying that by 100. Having understood in a very simple way how we go for calculating the yield percentage, let us focus on the significance of yield percentage. Yield percent is a vital tool for determining how much of an ingredient to purchase or used in a recipe. Now, when we understand the net usable part from a particular raw material, we can understand how much of that particular ingredient must be procured from the market in order to produce a certain number of portions. This will provide a clear guideline to the larder chef how much to order keeping in mind the various pickups of the day. When I say various pickups of the day, I mean the extent of the a la carte orders, the banquets and the allied areas. Calculating yield percentage is critical to placing an accurate food order. So, as we have understood that when we have a net usable quantity idea in our mind, it will help us to procure in a more justified fashion. That will also prevent overstocking or understocking of the materials. And at the same time, we can also find out what is the maximum number of servings that a purchased amount will yield. Let us understand this part in little bit more details. When we say that an optimum level should be ordered, we understand that the chef must have a clear idea regarding how much portion of food can be taken out from what quantity of the raw material and that clear picture can be given by a proper yield percentage only. Yield also helps us to determine the maximum number of servings that a purchase amount will yield. If suppose we have gone for the purchase of a certain quantity of meat, yield percentage will clearly tell me how many portions I can serve from that particular product which has been purchased. Why? Because the standard recipe specifies the amount of food to be served per portion. This also helps in the very important factor of recipe costing. When we are very much sure, when the larder is very much sure about the total cost of the raw material which is going into the production of a certain dish, the recipe costing can be done in a more effective way where it helps to maintain a proper profit percentage and at the same time it gives benefit of cost to the customer as well. Determining the yield percentage of the recipes in advance will lead to greater efficiencies and a more productive operation. When we say productive operation, we mean a more cost oriented operation where there is cost saving and expenditures are kept to a minimum level and optimum level rather without affecting the final product or the quality of the final product. And finally, when we go for yield tests, we can also have an insight into the level of skill which the manpower possess. As we have discussed with you while we have been talking with you regarding the pre-cooking yield or the butcher's yield, an efficient hand will definitely lead to much less trims being coming out. But if 
the hand is not up to the mark still it can be clearly understood the extent of the training which is required to be given to that particular personnel to ensure that the person is ready to take out the standard yield. We have already seen previously in this session how we can go for the yield calculations, how we can go for the butcher's yield calculation. Now, over here we have got a chicken the way it has been procured from the market. So, we can say that this is the purchase weight, we are going to go for the weight of this particular bird and that will be our purchase weight. So, let us see what the as purchase weight is. I am going to take the reading of the weight. The as purchase weight is 987 grams. We have seen that the purchase weight is 987 grams. Now, the first operation which has been done is the de skinning of the carcass. So, let us now weigh the carcass again and see what is the weight now. So, the first step which we have taken is removal of the skin of the chicken and by that the after the first processing the weight has reduced to 866 grams. So, from here we can calculate the trim that is 987 minus 866. So, 987 minus 866 Now, we are going to go for the yield percentage. So, my purchase weight was this, my process weight is this. So, I am getting this one as my So, after the first processing we find that the yield has come to 87.74 percent, rest is the trim loss. When we say trim loss, the trim in case of butchery can be utilized in various other places like making of stock or for stuffing purpose even it can be used as the skin of the sausage or it can be put to any other innovative use by the chef. So, if the trim is put into use while calculating the yield, we have to ultimately also see that the thing put into use is not treated as a waste. Now, we are going to see the boning yield. So, we have seen the yield after the first stage of operation that is removal of the skin. Now, we are going to find out from that carcass only if we remove the bones what yield of meat do we get. So, the carcass has been deboned and now we are trying to find out the weight of the boneless carcass. So, I have taken the reading it is coming to So, that same carcass after removal of the skin then when we have removed the bones also it is coming to 517 grams. So, from there again we can calculate the yield percentage. So, we find that after the bones have been removed from the carcass, we get 517 grams of boneless chicken and when we calculate the yield out of it, it comes to 52.38 percent. So, we see how progressively with every stage of processing, we see that the yield percentage is going down that is the net usable product is going down, the weight of the net usable product is going down. In this way, we calculate the yield for various cuts and this particular yield percentage will help us to find out what amount of raw material will be required to make a certain recipe for certain portions. And in the process once we get the quantity of the raw material 
as has been mentioned earlier in the previous slides, it will also help us to calculate the food cost. Focusing on whatever we have learned from this session, there can be certain important questions. List down the essential factors of larder control. Explain the importance of larder control. What is yield? Classify and define the types of yield. Elucidate on salient features that affect the yield of a whole chicken. Devise the steps that can result in effective larder control. Enlist the factors affecting yield. So, these are certain questions which can easily be answered if you have gained an insight into whatever has been told in this particular session and gone through the notes which has been handed over already. To sum up, in this session we focused on larder control. To understand the significance of control, we appreciate the fact that any kind of operation which is going on in any kind of department, those operations must be following certain standards and benchmarks. The control process helps us to understand whether we are adhering to those particular benchmarks or not. In case there is a deviation, we take note of that, analyze the situation and go for corrective action. So, this keeps our performance on track. Ladder control sets the benchmarks and ensures that standards are adhered to. For effective cost management, it is significant to get a high yield percentage depending on the nature of operations. Yield is the heart of the ladder control. Yield deals with how much we can actually use, what is the net usable amount we can get from a raw material which has been procured from the market. Higher is the yield percentage, better is our cost percentage figure. Higher is the yield percentage, we can go for better cost savings. Higher is the yield percentage, we can go for better food cost percentage reflection. It is very, very significant thereby to understand the throbbings of yield percentage and understand the pulse accordingly. If we miss a bit in that situation, we might have to cut a very sorry figure in the cost percentage. Ladder control must be given due importance and it checks the operational and financial aspects related to the section. We maintain the records, we maintain the daily cost sheet, we maintain the daily ordering schedules and at the same time we see what we have procured for the day and what output we have generated for the day. When we have a synergy, ladder control is a great success and the food cost is maintained at the required optimum level satisfying the benchmark. In our next session, we will be going for a total summarized version of the larder chapter and in that session, we will be combining all these three parts and getting a better insight into the entire process of functioning of the larder, its control, its layout. Thank you very much.